Survival School coming at you with the uh, fifth installment of the Backyard Bushcraft series. Uh, last uh, last episode we showed you how to make uh, fire by friction, uh, basically for beginners. So in this one, what we're going to be doing is uh, showing you how to do it with uh, with natural materials that have been found, and talk a little bit about ethics. All right. So I, I want to touch on that first. Ethically, you don't want to go you know, cutting down branches off of live trees, stuff like that, because you might kill, you might damage it, okay? So, um, what we do is when we're gathering our materials for practice is we want to gather standing dead stuff, and it makes it a lot easier, too. So, a good for instance is with juniper, those things hold tons of moisture, okay? Uh, they're a great uh, fire by friction set. The issue, though, is one, they have knots humps and bumps all through them so it makes it super difficult to split um, and uh, it's really hard to find a straight section um, you can use it it's great but you really want to only want to take the standing dead stuff anyway okay um, the other standing dead stuff that you can get would be for instance uh, flower stalks from a yucca plant and this one is the same thing but much larger this is a flower stalk from an agave so what I'm going to show you guys how to do is process uh, your uh, fire by friction set from this, uh, from the agave portion, and uh, this is just the bottom portion of uh, of this uh, of this yucca one, and we're going to use that for our spindle. So these are roughly about the same size. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of batoning. Okay, I uh, showed you a little bit about this last time. I'm going to explain it. Basically, you're taking a knife, and this is a, a little small one. I'm doing a review on. Um, and what you really want to do is you want to take it and split it right down the middle. So we take another stick, we, put, we position our weight directly above so we can push down as well as uh, uh, put, um, split it all the way through. So we want to get it as dead center as possible. It works like that. Now this it has a, this is an interesting plant because it's nice and semi-solid but still a little pithy on the uh, uh, on the inside and on the outside it's nice and solid and woody okay so we can do two things at this point in time I already have uh, a piece that we're going to use for the spindle but we could take one half of this knock off the edges and shape it for a spindle but for time's sake I've already got a round piece that's what we're going to use now what we're going to do with our other piece and this is going to be a second fireboard. We're just going to knock off the back end of it, and you want it to be about as thick as your thumb. So we're just going to knock the back end off of this bad boy um, in order to make sure this doesn't roll out on us. Okay, so that's taken care of. And if you want, and I like to do this sometimes, um, I'm going to square off the edge facing me anyway, uh, just to make it easier to cut into. Okay, so got a nice square edge. We're ready to go. Now, how we're going to play this next? We're going to handle this just the same way. We're going to. Uh, this has a slight curve in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to correct it by carving this portion. That's pretty much straightened it out. So now all we have to do, and this is going to be our top portion, and we're going to keep the bottom side, the, the fatter side, um, we're going to keep that uh, for our bottom. That's going to be the portion that makes contact with our hurt.
Okay, so we have a nice straight point on this side. Hit this one. Now, we could use the same one again, the same handhold, but I'm going to show you guys, I mentioned my palm rock the last time, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, shoot that one for this video. So, we're going to use our palm rock, which is just a rock that I found in the stream. It has stone impact, uh, I believe, because it fits so well in the hand, this may have actually been an artifact um, that was just lost, dropped out of a pack. Uh, so, same process, we're going to take our shorter, more bull-nosed portion. We're going to go uh, a little ways in, and we're going to make our indention. Next thing we're going to do is take our knife, again, safety, hold it the proper way, fingers far enough away. Now, the cool thing with this, this is a great uh, yucca, agave, sotal. All these are great beginner uh, woods to start off with uh, for the bow drill because they don't require as much pressure as the harder things like um, uh, juniper, uh, like cottonwood, uh, like tulip poplar, uh, those kind of things. Um, so it's really neat uh, to be in this part of the country for that. Uh, the, uh, the other issue is you hear a lot of people say, well, these are, the, these are the ones that produce the most consistent results, and that's true. Some people say you can't use mesquite, you can't use oak. Well, that's not true. You can, um, but it's going to be a lot harder and a lot less consistent. Your goal and what you're looking for uh, when you're selecting uh, a wood uh, for fire by friction, especially bow drill, is you want to be able to take your fingernail and make an indentation in the wood and be able to see that. Now. Again, like I said, yucca is a lot more pithy, so we're going to burn through this one super quick. We don't need as much pressure on it. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to burn in our notch, and then I'm going to try and find, okay, we'll use that seat leaf. Um, and then we're going to just get ready to go. So again, the portion that we're going to burn is loaded two-thirds of the way up. And you'll notice that this spindle is thicker than the last one I used, and the reasoning behind that is um, reasoning behind that is uh, can you still see that? Okay. Reasoning behind that is this stuff is not as strong as uh, as uh, some of the other materials. So um, if you go too big, it's going to require a little bit more energy to use. So. It is one of those wrist versus reward, but the bigger the spindle, the uh, the more uh, friction you get per turn. So again, we load it up, make sure it's on the outside of the bow to be able to utilize uh, mo uh, more space. Make sure our body position is correct. And then we're just going to start with a few turns. burn this in. Okay. Now, because we created that sharp point, we got sort of a drill going, and we don't want that. So we're going to carve that off. But our spindle now fits in what we're doing so we're going to break up the multi-tool this is a little bit easier uh, to do than the uh, cedar that I showed you earlier with the uh, the notching with the knife 
But survival is a lazy man's game, and you want to utilize it the fewest amount of calories as possible. So we're going to do this as quick as we can. Realistically, if you're out there in the bush and you're having to do this, understand if you need fire immediately, it's not going to happen. This is not an instantaneous, uh, an instantaneous thing as you guys saw in the last episode. All right, this takes some time, it takes practice, and it takes preparation. And if you don't have those things, then you're not going to get what you need out of this. Alright. Again, same thing. Pop that sucker right out. So, the drawback with using um, the, uh, the saw is you get a very narrow area. So what we're going to do again, go in, we're going to clean that up. Now, we can do a couple things to maximize the airflow here, all right? Um, this is one of those things, like I said, we're introducing variables. So, you have to be, uh, you have to be aware of all the things that's going to ma maximize your potential. So, one of the things you can do is, very carefully, round this off to where a little, it's, uh, you get more airflow. Now, this is a windy day today. So, we have our notch carved in, it's going straight to the center. Put our blade up, and now we lay our leaf or piece of bark or whatever we have, and we're gonna get us a coal. Remember, same technique, locking that wrist against the shin. We're going to take deep breaths, and we're going to get this going. All So we're gonna let that mature while that's mature, and I'm gonna go grab the bird's nest I left over here. All right, we're gonna protect this a little bit because it's kind of windy out here. We're gonna give this coal some time to get together and to heat up because if I move it right now more than likely it's going to fall apart up 
bird's nest. The wind's going to take care of this for us. So we turn our bird nest over. And that's how we get primitive fire by friction. At this point in time, we'd start adding our, uh, our materials and get it going. So, again, folks, remember. Uh, that's how you uh, practice with some primitive stuff. We had a technical difficulty with the spindle flying out right at the end. Um, I would have very much liked uh, to have gotten uh, a little bit larger coal, but it worked out to where that one worked for us. Now you guys can see the amount of calories that it takes, because remember, survival is a lazy man's game. This is not your number one go-to. You still want to practice it, you want to make sure this is a skill you own, but you don't want your life to depend on this. So. Uh, do me a favor, post up your, uh, your reply videos. I want to see you guys doing this stuff, all right? And uh, go ahead, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and uh, remember, stay dirty out there.